So on governance, this budget speaks from a position where we have delivered on development, we better managed the economy with correct intentions, correct policies, and correct decisions. So it's a govern governance with care, conviction, and confidence. If that stood for the GDP's G, the D stands for people living better, earning better, and having high aspirations for the future. And if I move to the P, the performance, three consecutive years of 7% growth, fastest growing economy in G20, all parts of the country participating in the growth. Price stability and inflation management, handling the health and economic fallout of COVID, build out of physical, digital, and social infrastructure. DPA as a factor of production almost for formalization and financial inclusion and growth of the economy. Cleaning up the banking system, GST, One Nation, One Market, and One Tax, the IBC. So if you were to look at payments, I've listed some of them. So your GDP, as we look at governance, development, and performance, I have something to say on each of these. So this budget, or water and account, is getting presented with the GDP that we want to speak to you about. And in that, the fiscal management actually is something which I would like you to spend some time, even as you go through the budget. But I'll flag it here. Bringing down the fiscal deficit in spite of very challenging times, as per the announced consolidation path, and with transparency and prudence. So, in fact, I was just remarking to my officers this morning, most of you all had already calculated the figures, RE revenue, RE expenditure, this is what it is. Because every month you get the reports coming out. So you don't need to wait till the budget statement. Every month you get the accounts and so budget process has become absolutely transparent and questionable if there are any, you're there to question, we are here to answer. But we set in the process of keeping everything brought on budget and nothing kept aside from it or underneath it. So with that, the budget deficit, fiscal deficit, 5.8%, which is much lower than the 5.9, which was at the BE. Similarly, for the 24-25 budget, we've given 5.1 as the fiscal deficit. So clearly indicating that we are on track to meet the glide path, which was set in 2021-22 and that we are in, uh, well on track to meet the 4.5% fiscal deficit on or below uh, 4.5 even by FY26. If this is the background with which I'm talking and the presentation of the budget happened, I want to very clearly put some things under the heading, if you want to call it that, Disha Nirdeshak Bate. You must have heard the Honorable Prime Minister speak before the Parliament session, <coughs> well before the sessions commenced. His usual customary remarks, he said the budget will be presented tomorrow and you will have some Disha Nirdeshak Bate in it. So, what are those Disha Nirdeshak Bate? There are about uh, five of them I highlight. Social justice as effective and necessary governance model. So it's not just a slogan for us, social justice, we'll have to work for Nyai. No, we've shown you that it is a governance model and a successful one at that. So social justice as an effective and governance, necessarily a governance model. Then four major caste groups, as we call it, 
as Prime Minister has emphasized, the poor, the, uh, the women, the youth and the Anadatta. So, Disha Nirdeshak Bate, you have the second point. Third, focus on infrastructure. This year again, massive increases of capex happened in the last four years. This year too, there is 11% increase, resulting in a very recallable number, 11 lakhs, 11,111 lakh, 11 lakh, 11,111 crores. So continuing the trend of the last four years, where capital expenditure has been the route, one for revival earlier from COVID, and now for sustained growth towards Amritkal, uh, towards the Vikasit Bharat goal. Fourth is the using of technology as a huge opportunity. DPI as almost a new factor of production. So it is actually bringing in the value addition to the economy. It is facilitating every sector to bring in the value addition which is so required and improves on our productivity. And the last Disha Nirdeshak Bate is High Powered Committee for extensive consideration of challenges arising from population growth and demographic challenges. So if these are Disha Nirdeshak Bate, what were the major announcements? I'll recall very quickly 12 of them. I'm not spending any time except for reading out what those 12 are. Two crore more homes under the PM Awas Yojana, we already completed nearly the three crore. Housing for middle class, rooftop solar for at least 300 units of power generation every month, which will be muft bijli for the households. There will be some assistance and some kind of a uh, funding uh, which will be extended. So you are generating renewable energy providing the renewable energy generators the free that which will they uh, that which will they that which will they would want to use and over and above that the surplus that they produce can be used for selling and earning money out of it enhancement of target for Lak uh, lakpati didi from 2 crore women to 3 crore women preparing and empowering the msmes to grow and compete globally aligning regulatory envi environment for them. Uh, the sixth is making sure that the eastern region, and when I say re eastern region, I'm not talking about northeast. Northeast will get the attention that they've been getting all the while. They will still continue to get it, and they will be on the top of our priority. But when I say the eastern region, I'm talking about Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, and Orissa, making sure that they'll become the engines of growth for the new Amritkal uh, India that we are trying to uh, use as a bridge towards leading to um, towards uh, Vikasit Bharat 2047. And Eastern India, I've missed out on West Bengal, please add it, <coughs> Bihar, Jharkhand, Orissa, Chhattisgarh and West Bengal. Next generation reforms will be carried on building consensus with states and stakeholders for reform, perform, transform. Three major corridors, which are programs for railways, for logistics efficiency, and they have been explained. The important point that I want to highlight there is to make sure for Vikasit Bharat, you just don't need to build for better passenger convenience, you need to build for better passenger convenience. Supporting reforms in state. They are separate from the development of tourism centers and therefore I want you all to have the clarity that help to centers are uh, f supporting reforms in state is slightly different from boost to tourism. There will be a white paper on economic performance of the last 10 years compared with the previous 10 years. The 12th announcement is so much a statement that I would like to make, which is what I made in the budget speech as well. Government has got the trust and the confidence and the blessings of the people based on its exemplary track record of GDP, as I said, 
governance, development and performance, effective delivery and also on Jan Kalyan. So highlighted, highlighted points have been realized as goals uh, of Vikasit Bharat till now and they are the realizable goals also continuing to be so because what we want to underline is we govern with good intentions, true dedication and hard work in the coming years and that's why Amrit Kal is also now called Kartabya Kal. In short, that's the budget. Thank you very much. Yeah. The Finance Minister has just now encapsulated the key highlights of the budget. We'll now open the floor. Uh, we can begin with the front row here. Please go ahead, 53. Uh, please hand over the microphone here. Hello, ma'am. This is uh, Priyashmita from Informist Media. Uh, ma'am, I wanted to know about the projections in your uh, tax collections. So tax collections are seen currently growing at about 14.4%. Your uh, April to December data shows. However, the projections in your budget are lower than that. So a back of the envelope calculation shows that you're going to get about 55,000 above your revised estimate if the collections continues. So your uh, estimates are conservative. Would you say that? I'll certainly ask Somanathan to come in on that. Estimates are always realistic with us. So let me, let me clarify this. Uh, if you look at page 6 of the budget, you can look at it later. I'll just explain it to you. We are projecting that gross tax revenue. Now, this gross tax revenue in this sheet is net of refunds. So net of refunds, we are projecting that in this financial year, it will grow by 12.5% with reference to last year's actual. So from 30.54 lakh crores last year to 34.37 lakh crores this year is what is presented in our revised estimates. However, the sharing of taxes with the states is different for different taxes. Not all taxes are shareable in the same ratios. What has happened this year, if you look at the numbers, and they are given on page 6, union excise duties have actually shrunk. They have not increased. Most other taxes have grown at, as you say, 14%, etc. Union excise duties have grown minus 5%. That reduction is almost entirely on the account of the center, 